G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. All right, the market is growing quite steadily. So have a look at that. $1.1 trillion now. So we were under a trillion. We were down around 900 and I think 30, 960 billion. Uh, not that long ago, like we're talking only days ago. Uh, and it has jumped right up and things are moving. I mean, look, we can see Bitcoin now back up around $36,000 and you know, all the worry that it was going to go down to 24 and you know 20,000 and even lower uh, and bitcoin of course just does its thing and says look not happening now we need to be careful uh you know there's lots of uh analytics out there that are showing retail is here now and once retail sort of gets here uh and you know i don't like to say this but retail is called the kind of dumb money that's when we're starting to get near the top that doesn't mean we're at the top right now but we're closer than we are further away. So we just need to keep that in mind. Can this uh, run, you know, push out till December this year? Maybe, can it push out till February, March the following year? Possible, I'm just not sure. I am sort of thinking more around sort of somewhere between August and sort of December this year is probably when we're gonna see the peak. Uh, you know, exactly where, who knows, and exactly how much, who knows as well. We'll have to wait and see. And there's different trains of thoughts on that. But look, BTC dominance just continues to drop. Even though Bitcoin's going up, its dominance is going down. Uh, Ethereum, uh, you know, its dominance is growing. And then all the other altcoins. I mean, look at the gas fees at the moment. It just tells you exactly what's going on. But let's have a look. Look, it's basically just a sea of green in the top 100. I mean, there's hardly any red in there whatsoever. It's not that you can't find any, but gee, there really isn't a lot. So what we want to do is let's go, what has really moved? I mean, a lot of things have moved in you know, Ethereum, but what's really pumped in the last 24 hours in the top 100? All right, Phantom, there you go. Uh, Uma, Sirecoin, Terra, Quant, Litecoin, finally making some moves. Uh, and of course, a lot of these coins are all doing it because now Ethereum has finally broke its old all-time high. So it used to be 1,480-ish uh, dollars, and look at that, we're nearly $100 over it. Uh, and you know things are likely to keep going that way uh, and be quite uh, interesting would be one way to say it. So really good gains there. And again, look, even over the seven days, you know these were just pumping. But let it, let's have a look. What about losses in the last 24 hours? Have we had any big losses? Curve, no, nah, look down. You know, 10%. Uh, and again, you know, it's still up 17%, uh, 14%, nearly 15% over seven days. And I'm, just, I'm sure if you have to look at the days before that, it probably was doing quite well. And then we're in just single digit territory losses. And look, no one's going to be too worried about that kind of stuff. Again, you know, like Voyager token. Oh no, it's dropped 5.7%, but it's up nearly 200% in seven days. I don't think anyone is too concerned about that whatsoever. All right. Let's go have a look at the charts though. So I did say I thought around February 8th, I thought we would get a breakout from uh, Ethereum or Bitcoin. And look, both of them did it within a few hours of me saying it. So, you know, I was a few days off there. And look, they're both kind of, you know, pumping at the same time. And that is, that is generally how you know when things are starting to get a little bit crazy. Because at first it's, you know, Bitcoin pumps, eases off ethereum pumps uh then the other sort of high uh caps and then the mid caps and the low caps and now things are just starting to happen in unison and that's what makes me think we are getting closer to the end than we are sort of further away so again i don't know exactly when it's going to happen i just have to keep an eye on the cycles uh, but i do think things are going to start to ramp up here uh, things are really going to start to push quite high and i think we're going to start to see some of those uh, violent sort of drops in the not too distant future as well i'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow or anything but if we you know let's say ethereum pumps by Oh, I don't know. Let's just take a rough guess. Let's say Ethereum gets up to sort of three thousand uh, dollars in the next few weeks. I wouldn't be surprised if we dropped uh, back down to around about this mark again. Things will start to get uh, fairly topsy turvy, is what I think. Uh, you know, whether it plays out that way, we'll have to wait and see. You know, I do see Ethereum kind of getting to at least five thousand dollars. So before it, until it hits five thousand dollars, I'm not really worrying about selling too much. I've sold tiny bits and pieces along the way just to make some money back, but really, I'm still just investing. 
All right, Bitcoin. And look, did exactly the same thing. I thought it was going to roll over here and going to kind of take to around about the 8th of February to push out. Nah, push straight out. And we can have a look. This is 3 in the morning uh, over in UTC time. Uh, so it's still early. We'll have to wait and see exactly what this is going to do. Uh, but this is super bullish. But we still have to worry with both Ethereum and Bitcoin that this still could be a bit of a fake out. It all just rolls over and falls back under. I personally don't think that's going to happen. I just don't see it. But something we need to keep in the back of our mind. So again, you don't just bet the whole house right here unless you know, you're know you 100% confident that it's going to do it. But I, it does feel like it was just kind of, again, it really bottomed out kind of around about here. We can see bottoming there, bottoming there. This one was a little bit lower and this one was only a little bit higher. But really, this was kind of a line. And now it's just bounced off that and continuing to go higher. Now, something very, very interesting. And an Aussie, good on you. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> so a pioneering Aussie engineer refinances home loan using DeFi in a single day. So after hitting a wall with banks, a borrower has turned to DeFi to pay off his mortgage. A software engineer has taken decentralized finance to a new level of practicality by paying off his mortgage that he had with Commonwealth Bank of Australia and refinancing the loan through fixed rate lending protocol, Notional Finance. So look, this is a big step. And Aave is looking to do uh, sort of similar stuff where you can uh, put your property on Aave and use it as collateral. So again, this is the future. Uh, DeFi is going to be absolutely massive, uh, you know, and this just goes to show, this is where finance is heading. It's not going to happen overnight and it's not all going to happen in this bull run, but it is starting to happen. So for me, my plan is, you know, hopefully I cash out uh, at the right time. We go through the next bear market. Uh, I will start to buy up again, more of the DeFi projects that I really, really like. Uh, I do think gaming uh, and you know non-fungible tokens and things like that uh, is going to be quite big in the next bull run. It'll still do all right now, but I think that will be the next bull run where uh, it will be bigger. And look, DeFi will still be big the next time around as well because we have to know how DeFi will handle the next bear market to know whether it, you know, the current DeFi pro projects and platforms that we have are here to last you know they were built uh, back in the 2017 and they did make it through this last bear run but they were still kind of in development they were all testing phases and that it's now these main nets that are launching how are they going to uh, cope through the next bear market or does it all just suddenly fall to pieces now I don't personally think uh, that will happen to all of them but it'll definitely happen to some of them I just can't tell you which ones I have my uh, you know Preferred projects, again, for me, love Synthetics, love Aave, you know, Chainlink, uh, massive fan, you know, they're embedded in there with uh, DeFi. Uh, I like Carver, uh, they've been doing some nice stuff. I like Kyber Network, but again, you know, will they stand the test of time? I don't know, Kyber Network's doing an upgrade because they were uh, really just getting outpaced by Uniswap and their fees and that were killing them, so... You know, hopefully they can, you know, get back to the kind of force that they were before to be reckoned with and things like that. But they have slipped behind and they've got some catching up to do. And, you know, Carver kind of had its moment uh, and then it died off and has been a little bit quiet. And now it's slowly starting to come back. They need to, you know, do some more work as well and get out there. But I still believe in them. Uh, I have my, you know, tokens uh, staked with them. And, yeah, we'll wait and see how they go. All right. So, Stella. Uh, and I spoke about this quite a while ago, but they have become uh, a new home of USDC as integration goes live. So the Stellar blockchain can be used to pay with USDC, the second largest stablecoin. Now, there was something interesting I found, found in here, and it's down in the bottom, but we'll read here. The Stellar Development Foundation announced Tuesday that it anticipated integration with USDC is live. Uh, users can now transact with USDC on the Stellar blockchain. The integration with the second largest stablecoin was initially announced in October last year, as Cointelegraph reported at the time. The stablecoin has doubled its total supply approach uh, from six uh, six billion uh, no, uh, appro supply to approach six billion, and that's up from two point seven billion. So. Yeah, that's kind of doubled in that time. So that is not too bad at all for USDC. 
Now, USDC is primarily used on Ethereum, where almost the entirety of its supply is found. Algorand, and I mentioned this a while ago before, was the second blockchain to host a USDC, but it has seen slow adoption so far. Just over 11 million currently circulates on Algorand, but it's up from 3.5 million in October. See, uh, Algorand, you know, if you have done any research, the guy who uh, built it, He's, the, he's a little bit like Charles Hoskinson. It's the slow process. You know, he's in it for the long run. He's not trying to, you know, p push it out fast and all the rest of it. So I, I like Algorand. Uh, it wasn't performing well enough for me, so uh, I sold. I still like the project, and I, and I hope it's being around. But, geez, if it's gone from uh, 3.5 million to 11 million in only a couple of months on Algorand, it doesn't sound like it's all that slow to me, but... Anyway, very, very interesting that finally uh, USDC is live on Stellar and we'll have to wait and see if this boosts uh, the Stellar uh, platform itself. Now, this doesn't surprise me at all. So game over. Wall Street bet stocks, so G GameStop uh, uh, and AMC tumble by over 50%. This was always going to happen. Now, it doesn't mean it's dead and buried. It just means they've taken some profits. Of course they were going to. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see whether... Uh, you know the big hedge funds and that were shorting it again uh, because if they were shorting it and it tumbled by over 50% then they probably made a whole lot of money but again this is what happens you know with kind of and I'm not against Wall Street bets I like what they're doing you know they're bucking the system but they're not going to simply just buy stocks and hold and never do anything with it and make any profit what was the point so if they've taken some profits then so be it they'll be looking for the next thing where they can kind of you know, stick it to the to the man, as they would say. But, you know, you can't blame them for taking some profits. Otherwise, everything's stuck in one thing and they can't move on to the next one. It's if they just completely dumped it all, then, yeah, that would turn out to be a pump and dump. Uh, and again, like Dogecoin, Dogecoin pumped really hard uh, and it's had a hefty retracement. But it hasn't just gone to zero. So you can't blame people for taking profits. But you do need to understand when you're getting into these things, that you know the people who get in the earliest at some stage are going to go now it's time to take profits and then other people will follow suit it just hurts if you are the last person to get in and all the profits get taken right as you join uh then you really have to just decide you know whether you're going to hold for better days or whether you know you take the losses and and move on but yeah so it's not wall street bets you know suddenly all over they really have just taken some profits and no one can blame them for that that's what we're all here for none of us are going to just simply invest in something and never take profits that's just silly and you never get anywhere all right this is big news so amazon they're getting a new ceo so andy jassy built a blockchain service uh on amazon uh, but was skeptical of technology's ability to address the company's biggest issues. So he, uh, you know, he's he's into blockchain a little bit, but uh, you know he has his, you know, doubts about it. But we can go down here. So Jeff Bezos, the founder of online retail giant Amazon, announced today that he will step down as CEO later this year. Andy Jassy, who currently leads the corporation's cloud computing subsidiary, Amazon Web Services, will uh, take reign in Q3. Andy Jassy, under Andy Jassy's leadership, AWS introduced Amazon Managed Blockchain, a service for developers looking to build in Hyperledger hyper Fabric or Ethereum Preview without supplying their own hosting uh, or hardware. So does he now lean towards uh, cryptocurrencies? Because they're the hot thing at the moment and it does seem to be the way of the future. Uh, imagine Amazon if they suddenly start you know, using blockchains and taking cryptocurrencies, you know, things like Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin and whatever it is that they want to use. There's a ton out there that is super bullish news for cryptocurrencies. Uh, and really, you know, considering how big Amazon is, they start uh, dealing in cryptocurrency payments. That is great news for the cryptocurrency market. All right, last but not least, so big pension funds. They are getting into Bitcoin in different sorts of ways. Some of them will likely invest in Bitcoin, but this is an interesting story. California pension fund loaded up on riot shares during Bitcoin's quarter four rally. So the largest public pension in the US bought more riot shares for the first time since 2017. 
So California's $441 billion public pension fund increases its stake in Bitcoin miner Riot blockchain. Uh, it nearly sevenfolded in last year's uh, Q4 amid the meteoric uh, run up to the price of Bitcoin. So basically, they are now worth over $1.9 million uh, at the end of 2020, uh, and that is up from simply the $49,000 that they have before. So again, pension funds are coming to Bitcoin, and they're doing it in different ways. It's not just simply buying Bitcoin or buying uh, shares in Grayscale's Bitcoin trust, but again, you know, in the infrastructure, in the miners themselves, cryptocurrencies is the future, it's happening. Uh, I see, you know, at least a really good decade worth of upside. You know, the upside will slowly subside for Bitcoin over time, but it's still early, guys. We're not going to see mass adoption at the end of this bull run. It will more be the next one and the one after will probably be where we really have the true mass adoption, where just everybody's into it. At the moment, it's just institutions and some retail are getting into it. They'll probably end up getting a little bit wrecked unless they've done their research because they are, you know, you know, if you're getting in now, you just need to understand that you might only have a couple of months of upside and then it's going to be some severe downside for at least a year or so. And it might take you two or three years to kind of get back to where you are today. Now, we don't exactly know if that is the case because we just have to wait and see what the high is. If the high only gets to, let's say, 70 or 80,000, it doesn't even get to the 100 plus everyone's thinking, then the low is probably going to be somewhere down around about, I don't know, five to $10,000. So if you're buying it at $30,000, $36,000, and it's gone down to, say, 5000 or 10000 then it's going to hurt, and it's going to take a while for that to build itself back up. But if it ends up going to, I don't know, something ridiculous, like let's say three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000, then I would say the low is probably going to be somewhere around kind of where it is now. So, you know, you could get in if you're lucky, you've done your research, played the market right, you can get out, make a whole lot of money, and then buy back in again at a lower price. But that's just things we need to keep in mind. But it is here, it's happening, institutional adoptions, pension funds, you name it. Uh, it is happening and I see massive upside for cryptocurrencies for at least 10 years, but it will fluctuate from, you know, euphoria to despair and all that kind of stuff. If you've been here before and you understand it, you know how it works uh, and you just got to huddle through those tough times. Uh, but that's easier said than done. All right. Love to know your thoughts down below. Do you think Wall Street bets are simply just getting out? They're dumping all their stocks. Or are they doing what all smart investors would do, taking some of those profits and now going and looking for the next project? Uh, I think that's all they've done. I don't think it was a pump and dump. It was just simply they made some profits. Of course, they're going to take some of it, but they haven't sold at all. Uh, and then they're looking for the next project. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that gain train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good. And I'll see you next time.